as we chronicle BSJ and Summer's Rift trip through the TI-5. Open qualifiers brought to you by Face It. We've got Summer's Rift taking on BDAB in this next series of the day. Uh, turns out they were given the series win 2-0 over uh, BM there after that uh, game win. New squad here for Summer's Rift, of course. That's why they're not in the invited qualifiers for the NA region. We've got Dragon Fist taking up their mid lane again. So we've got Demon, Brax, Whitebeard, Dragon Fist, and BSJ respectively on that Radiant side. And Morris, please, your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster. Thank you for joining me here on Hefla TV 2. Got some more games, I think, in the EU region currently going on on Hefla TV 1. Be sure to multi-twitch that up and check that out over with Grandis V as well. But thank you for joining me either way. We will have a draft for this one, so going to be able to get into the lobby earlier on uh, thanks to the admins uh, catching up with all the headaches. So thanks again for joining me, guys. We're going to jump right into the draft here. Uh, we've got Visage Undying Bands coming out from the dire side here from BDAB and certainly are warranted recently in the meta visage very strong with the change to the familiars now needing requiring hits as opposed to HP to be brought down undying's just been very strong before kind of people have found their bearings in this patch and uh, lane dominance has really translated into wins at least early in this patch more often than it has in any of the last three or four patches so Certainly a warranted ban from them. They're going to pick up first pick after the IO and Gyro bans come out from the Summer's Rift side on the Radiant. And we are going to see the first pick Beastmaster come out. So Brax played this last game. Not sure if BDAB were or had eyes on that. But if so, they're going to be able to pick that up. A very nice couple of changes to him as well with the attack animation on the boar. And I believe it was a little bit of base strength given to the Beastmaster as well. So looking really good thus far. Throwback combo going to come out here. Two supports uh, for Demon and Whitebeard are going to be the Crystal Maiden and the Sand King very early on. A lot of good roam potential. Uh, of course, the Arcane Aura from the Crystal Maiden going to be nice. And the jungling capability of the Sand King certainly there as well. We saw EG in the Summit run an offlane Sand King the other day. So that's certainly a possibility. Probably less likely than is the support role. Um, but this opening does definitely leave a lot of good steals coming out for this Rubik. So certainly a nice pickup for the Radiant side here. Epicenter, Burrow Strike, uh, Frost Nova. Uh, I should say Crystal Nova and of course that Frostbite are all very nice if you're able to get that freezing field pretty damn good as well so looking very good for BSJ's squad uh, also looking a little bit scary with the Rubik on the other side but they have left their bands a little bit more obvious here as they don't pick up any cores in the first phase generally you see that one core one support opening from most teams but already I'm gonna see some respect bands towards BSJ uh, he is considered a very talented player, but one with certainly a limited pool. Uh, you've got your Huskar, your Slark, your Juggernaut. Uh, probably the main three for BSJ. He plays the PL a lot as well. Uh, if you're able to ban uh, most of those, then it does leave uh, Summer's Rift with a little bit of a narrow scope as to what direction they can go. Night Stalker ban, though, going to come out here from the Radiant side, and certainly that vision would be very very essential to being able to establish map control with a roaming duo like a cm and sand king so wise ban not sure if it's something that bsj and squad were looking to go for but certainly a ban that uh, would have synergized very well with what they have thus far uh, the arcane are allowing him to spam out the voids as well throughout nighttime allows him to be really aggressive uh, so interesting ban their omni knight going to be banned as well as the brood mother uh, from the Radiant side and Summer's Rift not having any of Brood in this one uh, They'll pick up the Queen of Pain for Dragon Fist in the mid lane presumably at this point could be over in the off lane um, But we'll see what it what ends up happening Brax has now taken up the off lane Recently for Summer's Rift. They are fairly flexible though um, So you will see Brax and Dragon Fist swap roles according to their comfort levels on the heroes being played in that role so we will see what direction they end up taking it but already some nice pure damage here beastmaster certainly very good up against the queen of pain with that single target lockdown uh three seconds at level one real scary before a lincoln's comes out if it comes out for this queen of pain so 
it is a bit scary of a queen of pain game it's also uh another real nice toolkit for the rubik to steal i'm everything but shadow strike is an awesome spell for him to pick up and shadow strike not even bad in its own right uh so rubik has a lot to grab up this game we are going to see the dark seer pick this has come back into favor very recently brack's probably going to take that up into the off lane for radiant and a couple of nice buffs to the ion shell and the wall in the last patch the ion shell lasting a lot longer now you can get a triple ion shell up in one set of cooldowns um or one set of duration buff duration so looking really good a lot of potential for early damage there dark seer crystal maiden lena scary a lane as any if they do opt to go aggro and maybe give that queen of pain some safe lane farm to keep her uh safe from that grabbing that uh, primal roar early on and and stifling her snowball so very scary pickup for the radiant side uh, okay. once again some good stuff for rubik to take from the dark seer but the first three picks certainly uh, a lot more juicy for his wand and we will see the anti-mage pick up coming out here uh, the magic resistance certainly very nice up against all of uh, the radiant lineup here the sonic wave of course going to pierce through that with the pure damage coming out there and the wall as well but anti-mage with the blink available to him should have a pretty good time in this one if he picks up that manta there aren't too many hard disables really just the burl strike and the frostbite that come out for this anti-mage so if he's able to manta dodge one of those or dispel one of those uh, that being the frostbite more than the burl strike he should be pretty free to roam around these team fights shouldn't really be hard pressed uh to go his own item progression and find his own route here rather than having to opt for that bkb so i really do like the pickup from the radiant side here it does synergize fairly well with the beastmaster as well uh him picking up necro books with the mana burn uh, alongside the feedback coming out from the anti-mage is really scary for some of these mana intensive cores like the queen of pain over on summer's rift side so could be a very good pickup here not something we've seen all that often but here is the pl that i mentioned earlier coming out for bsj so look for mana burn to be on both sides here uh with that diffusal blade eventually to come out for banana slam jamma and he's certainly very proficient on this pl and very scary as well there is some aoe clear via the lena there will be a battle fury at some point presumably as well for the anti-mage and the fade bolt is there with the axes so they do have ways to deal with illusions here a pl always certainly nothing to scoff at in that late game phase with the doppelganger is going to be very elusive and tough to hit lsa's telekinesis and the primal roar on uh, only the lsa having the aoe uh, capability to stun is probably the most reliable of the three but the other two are going to be tougher to land more often than not presumably for bsj uh so yeah uh, rose town we will be following uh, sr as they go through the brackets um so here we will have the final pick coming out as a magnus for the dire side and the rp could be nice into the pl here uh, rp him maybe bring down his illusions with a shockwave and then primal roar him up before he's able to get off the doppelganger and bsj could certainly go down here in terms of the mid lane matchup though queen of pain gonna have a nice time against this magnus magnus needs to look to pick up levels and uh perhaps bottle crow and start last hitting with that shock wave uh, else it's going to be a little bit tough in this mid lane maybe they opt to put the beastmaster there not too familiar with the roles of bdab here but uh, they are going to be the next challenge for summer's rift summer's rift already played uh two series today and so they are going to be fatigued by the end of the day but they are certainly expected to kind of roll through this qualifier so uh, if they're able to do so, should be a really good time for them. Get this directed camera out of here. Dan's game. But either way, we're going to hop into this one, guys. We've got Summer's Rift to take it on BDAB. I am more HPs, your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster. Thank you for joining me over on Hefla TV 2. Hefla TV 1 has some EU or the wrapping up of the EU region in these open qualifiers. So be sure to check that out for some of the finals there. G-Easy or Demon 
Doto gonna be picking up this Sand King here. We've got Whitebeard, or my name is Jeff, picking up the Crystal Maiden BSJ on his signature PL. That's gonna leave Dragon Fist towards the mid lane on the Queen of Pain. Brax picking up the Dark Seer on the off lane. Over on the dire side, we've got HFN. Picking up that Anti-Mage who looks to have a very good game on paper for himself in this one. Cat is going to pick up the Lena Berserk on the Rubik. The Abyss is near, picking up the Sun of Arise, Magnus. And we've got Farewell Bright on that Beastmaster, looking pretty slick in the red tail and hood. We're going to have Whitebeard stalking the bottom rune from the Roche Pit here. And it looks like it's certainly very possible for the Radiant to get both runes here. And we all know that's an instant GG. If that ends up being the case, Berserk going to walk forward with that Telekinesis. But the Queen of Pain and Brax both walking down looking to secure this top. They're going to be able to do so with relative ease, it seems. And it will be picked up by the Phantom Lancer and the Queen of Pain. They're even going to get the Burrow out as well as the Ion Shell out onto the Abyss. And the Skewer is not going to reach the high ground. First Blood and two Bounty Runes going to the Radiant side. And not the start you're asking for in a lane where already the Magnus has a disadvantage. He's going to have to pick up a TP. He went for that Bottle Rush. And Null Tally up on the Queen of Pain is going to mean Dragon Fist is going to have a lovely time in this mid lane up against the magnus top lane they're gonna look to go in on brax telekinesis is their cat with the lsa is gonna land it but they don't have enough follow-up damage without their anti-mage available a couple right clicks though from that am with the mana break skilled at level one maybe is able to bring down that dark seer but farm a little too important at this phase just zoning out brax good enough for the supports for now taking a look at his regen situation he's got four tangles and has already popped his clarity. So we'll be okay to stay in lane. Maybe a little bit mana dry at some point though. Pulls are going to be uh, executed by Cat. Or the stack should be executed. And pulls soon thereafter. Already mid lane advantage being secured by Dragon Fist here. 5 and 3. Up against the 0 and 1 of this Magnus. And it's going to look very scary after feeding that first blood. first blood for the Magnus. As mentioned in the draft. He's going to need that bottle. And use Shockwave to last hit, but it's a little bit of a ways off still. 584 HP. Meanwhile, the offlaner for the Dire Side is doing very well. Uh, only having two heroes up in this lane means this Beastmaster with his Boar Slow and the Double Boar available to him after the buffs a couple patches ago. Should be just fine to soak XP. As you see, he's already level 3. Mid lane, they are going to look to go in on the Magnus, but Burl Strike level 1. Very, very short range, and they're not going to be able to close the distance. But it looks like they may have forced out the Skewer from the Abyss. As he's very low on mana and still not enough for this bottle. He's going to need a Shockwave in order to last hit. If he gets anywhere in close, he's probably dead. Berserk going to rotate in though. And try to harass back the Queen of Pain. Not going to expend any spells at this point. Uh, just trying to get that last hit for his Magnus to pick up his bottle here. And he will find it. Bottle going to come out now. So the Abyss going to have a much better time in this lane, albeit still a very damned lane for the Dire side. And Dragon Fist securing a very big advantage here, 14-7 and seven to the 3-1 and one of this Magnus. He's being almost quintupled in last hits right now. BSJ on the PL, 14-1 and one bottom lane, about equivalent with his counterpart in HFN's Anti-Mage. So... Things looking pretty even on that front. Mid lane is the big gap right now in the lanes for both sides. Brax picked up his level 2. Beastmaster doing a little bit better, but now the rotations come through to the bot lane from the Crystal Mated. They are going to catch the Crystal Nova, but Demon is way too short for that Burrow Strike. Only level 3. Two levels in the Sandstorm in order to jungle. They will zone out the Beastmaster for now. And the Deny from Farewell Bright will be there onto his boar. Uh, he'll be fine to get back, but as mentioned, already level 4. Brax sitting on level 2, almost 3 now. So, Dire Side going to be pleased with that matchup. And once again, mid lane, not doing extremely well. They are crowing back the bottle, though. So we have seen the Magnus recover a little bit from 3 and 1 about a moment ago. Picks up a full wave, 8 and 1 now, to the 22 and 9 of Dragon Fist's Queen of Pain. Dragon Fist has the bottle and the Null Tally. As well as his boots can look to get pretty aggressive here. 2-1-2 two, two build thus far from the Queen of Pain. A little bit of extra points in the Shadow Strike. In order to secure that lane control. Uh, Crystal Maiden. Looking to find the Hawk here. 
He's going to bring down the tree. We'll find the hawk, but some nice micro there is going to force out the crystal nova. And Jeff's going to have his vision denied as well as he's not going to be able to block up the pull camp anymore. Brack's going to have to surge back top lane. A little bit worried about what lurks in the fog. And Berserk actually now spotted out by this Radiant Observer Ward. So, yeah, unfortunately, this is Dota TV, although I'm directly in the lobby, guys. No drawing on the ground, so. Terrible cast. Just terrible. 1 to nil is your score. Four and a half minutes in for the Radiant side, but elsewhere, they are looking very good. They've already accrued 1,500. They are in excess of that in terms of net worth and a little bit of an experience lead as well. Uh, experience lead somewhat mitigated by this Beastmaster who's doing much better than his counterpart in the Darkseer. I shouldn't say much better, about a full level better. He is going to catch a Crystal Nova. And Whitebeard trying to rotate in with the Frostbite. He's going to look to man up. Phantom Lance is going to come out, but smart TP from Farewell Bright. Now they will force him out of lane. Whitebeard is going to have to micro away that aggro from the tower. And jump forward mid lane. Demon going to come through with the Burrow Strike. And he's going to block up the Skewer or try to, but he actually misses. And bottling up is the Magnus. Rotations through from Berserk as well. Shockwave's going to be there. Dragon Fist getting low. Cat not going to be able to get up ground for that last right click. And they're going to look to re-engage. Jump forward. Burrow Strike and the Scream of Pain onto Cat. Shockwave's going to be there. Forcing back the Queen of Pain. And now Demon. I'm going to take an LSA and a Dragon Slave to the face. And when all is said and done, one for nil. Going the Dyer's way in the mid lane. Even the rotation from Brax coming over at the end is going to be to no avail. They do know Farewell Bright is therefore alone in this bot lane. So Whitebeard and BSJ getting a little bit aggressive up against this Beastmaster. But we'll see how far they're willing to dive. And Phantom Rush is going to be stopped short by BSJ. Six minutes in. Dragon Fist going to jump forward mid lane. Magic Stick going to keep the Magnus healthy. And I mean, this is possible that it ticks him down here. It's going to be very close. He's going to actually try and rotate back to lane. I think this Magnus is dead. Yes, yeah, Skewer's there. One more tick. And the Abyss is going to get the bottle, though, with that Skewer up to the Courier. Nicely played by the Abyss is near. And he'll be able to barely survive out of that mid lane. Meanwhile, Dragon Fist, though, expending very little to force him back. So. Queen of Pain didn't die in that engagement as well. We only saw Demon die, and he'll be able to farm up some stacks here. With that third level in Sandstorm. Six, almost seven minutes in. Bot lane. We'll see an engagement here. And the Doppelganger are going to keep BSJ safe. That's three heroes rotated in from the dire side, and they're not going to find much. They're even going in on Berserk with the illusion there. One more right click. Won't be enough. Dragon Slave going to force back the Crystal Maiden as well. But fighting 2v3 like that, while Demon farms away, stacks away certainly beneficial for this radiant side and elsewhere they are doing fairly well brax has now been able to pretty much 1v1 against hfn for the last little bit hfn certainly not too worried about it uh, it does have that blink so uh, darkseer doesn't really have any kill potential but certainly an annoyance to lane against and brax now picking up some of xp will be able to drag back the large camp as well and he's going to be able to jungle this up as well as deny a little bit of experience from hfn and he'll get a full wave under tower if he's successful in doing so. HFN, well aware of what's going on though. We'll be able to find the farm of the full wave. So isn't going to have anything denied from him. But Brax finds a little bit of farm. Five and a half levels on that Darkseer. A full six to Farewell Bright. So the catch-up game is real for Brax and the Radiant side. And that gap has been closed significantly here. Queen of Pain. Looking at this rune top. Needs to be a little bit careful. Doesn't use the blink. And didn't even have enough mana at the time. Dire Observer Ward would have scouted out the Queen of Pain there. So Dragon Fist is going to need to at least crow. If not, go back to base if he wants uh, to be able to throw out his toolkit. But does have the Arcane Aura, so definitely able to stay in lane at the very least. HFN building that early Battle Fury, as mentioned in the draft, up against the PL. Certainly makes sense. Has the hatchet for lane anyways, so... Not the biggest setback in terms of that change to the item. Uh, Berserk executing a pull here on the double stack. Triple stack, actually. And he's going to find himself a nice chunk of XP. He's only level 3, is this Rubik. That's the bottom of the chart right now. Um, my name is Jeff. Is level 5. That's Whitebeard picking that up. Brax level 5 as well. And Demon level 7 on his Sand King. And the full blink. Sub 9 minutes. 
Looking like a really good timing for Summer's Rift. He's going to immediately smoke. And the Magnus, not the best target, does have the RP and the Skewer. And no Sonic Wave available to Queen of Pain yet. So they're going to need more rotations in, but g Easy or Jimmy Ho. Going to do a little searching with this Blink Dagger. Maybe looks to help out Brax top lane. They are going to need TPs in, though, as mentioned, for this to be successful. Level 7, almost 8 on the PL for BSJ. Top in the net worth chart, just barely over HFN. Does pick up his Yasha. And HFN. Still that Broadsword and the Void Stone away from the Battle Fury. Brax. Maybe looking to bait in lane a bit. Epicenter. Is available to Demon, so a lot of damage can be dished by the Sand King. If they find anyone slightly out of position. He's got an Ion Shell up as well, so... If HFN walks up here in lane, look for the Epi to be can can channeled by g Easy or yeah, Demon. Coin. And HFN sitting up in lane, looking to pull back. The Creeps Cat rotating around, does not have vision quite yet. Looking at the Dire Vision there, does not see Demon. Up in that nook. And Demon did see the Lena, but is going to rotate bot lane and just abandon this one. Was a little bit patient there, but it's not going to pay off. They maybe look to get Farewell Bright. He's pretty tanky, 850 HP only with the Tranquils. So they are going to have to rotate in that Crystal Maiden and g Easy Or Demon. Just going to be willing to get back into that jungle or reconvene with the Crystal Maiden. Maybe look for a kill over on the mid laner. Speaking of which, Farewell Bright. Cat gonna double smoke up here and look to find someone in this mid lane. They have the primal roar very nice against the Queen of Pain, but where are they gonna rotate through? They're gonna find Demon here on the low ground. LSA is available from Cat. He's gonna pop it. It's gonna land onto Demon. The Dragon Slave will be there as well. Burrow through two from Demon. He has the blink as well. Crystal Nova will be there. No mana on the Sand King to re engage, but the blink forward Scream of Pain is gonna bring down one easy second kill coming the way of. Dragon Fist as well. They're actually going to give that to Demon while they take down the boar. And a 2 for nil going the way of the Radiant side. So a little bit odd choice of movement coming out from the Dire through this path. And unfortunately for them, Demon just waiting around jungling. And they knew he was off the map. So maybe it would have been smarter to come from the north. But either way, Smoke thwarted. And a 2 for nil going the Radiant's way. Mech to come out soon as well for Brax, so they can certainly ball up from the Radiant side if they opt to do so. Full treads and, and an Oblivion Staff available to Dragon Fist. He's going to bring that out to himself now as well. So, 12 minutes in, looking at with 800 gold in the pockets, about a 14.5 to 15.5 minute Orchid. So, very good timing from this Queen of Pain. 1 0 and 3 is going to pick up an Invisibility Rune. Maybe looking to scout here. High ground, no sentries, or you know, even observers for the dire side. And with the sonic wave, maybe they're able to blow up uh, this anti mage, but they will need the burrow strike there. Cat is going to be scouted out. And just a few right click scream of pain. Nice blink dodge as well. We'll get dropped into the Telekinesis. Primal Roar will be there as well, but the Frostbite going to keep back the Beastmaster. And the Freezing Field doing a lot of work. Mana Void, though, going to cancel that up. And the dire side. Pick off the Queen of Pain and the Crystal Maiden for their Lina. Very nice trade for them top lane, but elsewhere they lose their Magnus mid lane. And it looks like maybe a rotation in from Demon with that Blink Dagger as well as BSJ. And he's even going to find out a triple stack here from the Dire side. Isn't able to farm that up though, even with the Morbid Mass. 1600 gold onto BSJ. Can pick up that H Dom if he'd like now. And probably will look to do so. Hawk is going to scout things out. Bot lane. Dire Vision. Going to catch BSJ here with the lance though. He's going to bring down that Hawk. And nicely played from him by virtue of this Observer Ward and this Observer Ward. They saw that Hawk rotating in. Mid lane. TP's in from the Queen of Pain. He's going to jump forward. Scare back HFN. Blink is available from Sand King if he wants to show his face in lane again. It looks like that was maybe a miscommunication from the Radiant side. If they jump in with the Burrow alongside the Scream of Pain there, Sonic Wave easily kills off HFN. He's only got 948 HP total. Does have that full Battle Fury up though, sub 14 minutes. And now this triple stack gonna be a quad stack. And this is gonna be very nice for him to pick up 
They're going to secure this farm heavily here. Whitebeard's going to get caught out. And a nice telekinesis drop is actually going to stop the jump in Burrow. But the Sonic Wave onto three from Whitebeard. And uh, now the Primal Roar expended onto Jimmy. He's got the Blink available. They're going to expend the RP for it, though. And try to bring him down. But he's still too healthy with the Ion Shell. HFN going to have to blink back. And two bottle charges available to Dragon Fist. The Phantom Lance coming out for the Beastmaster. They're looking for this anti mage, but HFN blinks out to the north. And the epicenter gonna be channeled up mid lane for Cat. And the Sandstorm gonna be able to disjoint Jimmy. Nice play on him by him on the boundaries of life and death there. He's gonna expend that epicenter on the backside of the engagement. RP was used, so definite tower push coming out from the radiant side here and all of their heroes available to live through that one, except, I believe, Whitebeard, who was brought down very early on on the Crystal Maiden. So either way, a good trade, and HFN not able to find the kill on the Sand King after the RP. Unfortunate, to say the least. They're going to look for this deny here. Is Berserk not going to be able to get it? He did steal the Phantom Lance, but he get, makes himself a little bit vulnerable here in the trees. He's going to catch a Shadow Shake. Shockwave through three Telekinesis up onto Brax. He does have that mechanism available, and he's going to hold on to it. He will pop it now. Shockwave, Dragon Slave though, gonna finish him off. Rubik for a Darkseer, not a good trade if you're the Radiant, but they do get the tower as well. So overall, nice little swing as you see there going the Dyer's way as the offlaner was brought down for a support, but overall, still looking good for the Radiant side. Take a look at that metrics. Almost 10k in the way of net worth in their favor. And 5k in the way of experience. 15 minute Blink Dagger does come out for the magnus as i mentioned earlier 15 and a half minute orchid coming out for um dragon fist and very nice timing on the orchid a little bit late on the blink but better late than never rp cooling down here as well invis rune gonna be picked up by dragon fist a little bit of warding being committed by the smoked up crystal maiden and they're gonna run into berserk here easy kill on the rubik he drops a sentry it's a little bit too late unfortunately um and unfortunately for the radiant side they dropped both their sentries just a moment ago actually one just dropped here as well so blocking up all the camps on the dire side they're gonna smoke right under a sentry but there's no observer vision so this should have gone undetected to the dire and as you see abyss leaving himself vulnerable mid lane he's gonna get blown up here skewer not even gonna be able to be attempted by that magnus and dominating streak going jimmy's way Meanwhile, Brax bringing down that tier one. That's the last tier one standing for the side of uh, BDAB. Burrow Strike going to force HFN back. Not, no kill potential there for Jimmy. He'll TP out on the cliff as well. Um, but any time they spend, you know, stopping this anti-mage's farm, as you see, all the commitment of these sentries here is time well spent for this Radiant side. It's really the only hope for the Dire. They need a huge RP uh, elsewise for them to win a fight and that just really hasn't been the case thus far for the abyss they are going to smoke look for some recovery here hfn maybe going to bait himself out but they will have the smoke pop brax going to try and surge away he will get telekinesed up and this is a dead dark seer to say the least they do expend a lot there in the roar but 90 second cooldown at this point if it's still level one 80 second cooldown excuse me for that primal roar so that'll be up fairly soon and a kill is a kill especially on a core as opposed to a support. So maybe not the most ideal target, but certainly one uh, that the Dire side are willing to take at this point. Whitebeard completely poor on this Crystal Maiden as his, his counterpart on the Lina. Uh, but Orchid and the Ogre Club available now for Dragon Fist. So could be an Aghanims, could be a BKB. Um, BKB pretty underwhelming in this one. So I'm going to expect the Aghanims. Primal Roar. Laguna Blade if there's an Ags, but Primal Roar and RP pierce through that BKB. Don't know how much it saves the Queen of Pain. Uh, the Telekinesis and the LSA are certainly annoying to deal with, but if she allows Darkseer and Demon Sand King to initiate, shouldn't be that big of a deal. Veil of Discord to come out now for Jimmy as well. He's got all the components of that. So that's going to be real nice. Uh, for him to add to his toolkit freezing field epicenter on top of that veil will wipe a whole team but hfn's found some space picked up that yasha still farming better than bsj as an anti-mage would tend to do over a pl 
Um, BSJ is certainly very scary though as well. Picked up his boots of travel, so very mobile around the map. Does have that full manta as well. Looking at the dire TP situation, everyone's got one except for the Beastmaster. So BSG needs to be a little bit worried here, but the split push is going to be covered by his Queen of Pain, and this tier 2 should go down relatively uncontested. Ward is going to be spotted out. By the Radiant side, meanwhile, BSJ hacking away at the tier 2 will be able to find his last hit. And Whitebeard continuing to purchase up these wards and establish complete map control for the Radiant side. They're starting to choke out the Dire, and when you do have that Magnus Blink, you really want to be setting the tempo for your team, or at least creating space for your Anti-Mage, and they have found some space for HFN, don't know if it's enough. And I guess that means game is hard, doesn't it? <laughs> Get that out of here. <laughs> but either way, it does look a little difficult for the Radiant side. About 10k in the way of net worth, 5k in the way of experience. That's been about stagnant for the last few minutes, though, for the Radiant side. So no real advantage secured for them very recently. Brax did go down recently in that top lane, but the quad core, you could say, with Demon is out net worthing everyone on the radiant side nice vacuum into burrow and the scream of pain is there wall is going to be dropped cat is the only one out of position though the abyss trying to get his blink in the fog won't be able to get it but they are going to get the primal roar onto demon and they just don't have enough follow-up to bring him down now dragon fist going to jump forward onto berserk just zoning him out meanwhile bsj chasing down hfn but hfn going to turn and actually man up against the pl here manta's going to be popped by bsj this is a fight for the ages and the mana void's going to be there and BSJ going to be dropped by HFN. No help in tow from the rest of his squad. And that's a huge kill going the Anti-Mage's way. Widens the gap a bit between the net worth. Gives him 1,300 gold there. Survives as well. And BSJ, smart, smartly enough, buys out. So is on his way to his defusal. And with a defusal blade there, it's a much different fight with the effective damage. But opting for those boots to travel first. HFN having the item advantage. And with that Battle Fury is able to do some work against BSJ. So a nice kill going HFN's way. Don't know if it's enough quite yet, but still HFN atopping the leaderboard in terms of net worth. And at this point, looking at 200 plus CS for him. 189, certainly respectable for the PL. But BSJ feeding that death over there is going to be a little bit worried. Um... You see HFN looking to farm enemy jungle here. Does expend his blink right into a couple of images. Needs to be careful. He may be blink back, but he's being pincered. Actually being accompanied by his teammates there. And yeah, they're not going to look to engage onto him. Magnus, don't think he was seen by the Radiant there in the trees. Doesn't seem to be the case. Radiant Vision is going to scout the Anti-Mage briefly. And the Magnus now. They are aware of these rotations. And they're going to play it safe and continue to split push. With the new Caustic Finale, Demon having a very easy time split pushing. HFN probably going to be a little scared about jumping forward for this tower. Here's Demon. He does have support inbound as well. He's going to look for the Blink Burrow. There's a two-man Blink Burrow available. HFN actually going to be the one to aggress forward. And now he's going to leave his Magnus completely out. Hung out to dry. Will be able to Blink himself out. Magnus going to be the sacrificial lamb there, but HFN getting a little aggressive, not able to get that right click off. Demon with the responsive blink is able to grab up that Magnus. Now HFN having to rotate out mid lane. They do have the Hawk Vision as well. Brax going to blink forward. Does get the vacuum onto Farewell Bright. The Orchid is there from the Queen of Pain as well. Are they going to continue to chase? The Surge comes through. The Burl Strike is there. The Scream of Pain. Farewell Bright going to be brought down as well. And HFN seems to be the only one ever surviving these engagements. He is going to try and cut the wave in the mid lane. Playing pretty ballsy here is the Anti-Mage. Blinks out to the east. And even going to farm for his troubles. Orchid is available to this Queen of Pain. HFN needs to be very careful. He's going to get Orchid up. He will Manta it off. Man up against the Queen of Pain. And back out promptly thereafter. Nice play from HFN. And he's really straddling the boundaries of life and death here. And does have a very obviously good understanding of what he's able to get away with with this Manta style. 3,600 gold in HFN's pockets right now. And the pick that I did mention looked very good in the draft in terms of what they have to deal with him or lack thereof tools to deal with him. 
it has panned out pretty well for the dire side here 16 to 7 is the score doesn't nearly feel like that kind of advantage though for the radiant side i mean you take a look at the net worth distribution and radiant looking very good but anti-mage certainly very scary does pick up that reaver now no vlads though so it's going to be a little bit of a tough roche with the lsa coming through though it's going to be a little bit quicker from cat hfn trying to solo this up he's going to be a little hard pressed to do so magnus going to come in tank that up does have the empower as well and hfn is going to be able to pick up this aegis here and that's a very nice sneak radiant complete or radiant completely unaware of that pms on the ground pretty good item actually now that the stout shield has been nerfed it's in effect made poor man's shield better than it was hfn though now for the next few minutes the radiant do need to think twice about fighting but bsj low on mana and they're gonna smoke up anyways I mean, PL, not the most mana-dependent hero, for sure. They're going to jump forward. They'll find Cat. Vacuum is there. LSA is going to land onto Brax and to BSJ. But one more right-click brings down the Lina and the Dire not having much of this. So Smoke, successful, but only brings down a support Lina who does have buyback at this point. So this is not going to translate into any instant objectives, I don't believe. For the Radiant side, they will look to mount a push here. But 15 seconds till the Lina is up without even having to buy back. And they'll probably only just get some chip damage done on this mid lane. BSJ with the Ion Shell up is an obvious roar target. And the Beastmaster does not have Blink though, opting for the Necro Book. So actually they will get the full tier 2 here. Interesting with an Aegis, the Dire side not looking to fight. But HFN trying to split P bottom. We'll have some TPs inbound from the Darks here. And he's really not too worried about at this point. He's going to get vacuumed back. Does blink out. We'll leave that tower in deny range. So does take away that last bastion towards Roshan from the dire side once it's denied. And it will get denied by BSJ. But um, not looking to fight mid lane was a little curious, I believe, with the RP up. And Lena now alive again. HFN has reconvened with his teammates mid lane and is looking to bait things out. With the blink available to the Magnus. Hawk going to be taken out by the vacuum there. And now rotating through. Looking for this Darkseer. Is the dire side. They're going to have their smoke pop. But they don't know that it's by Whitebeard on the east. They blink forward. They don't find anyone. The Crystal Maiden though. Now is going to show her face. And will be brought down. Laguna Blade going to be dropped there. Guardians Greaves tries to keep her up. Coming out from that Darkseer. But isn't enough. And now with the Aegis and that pickoff. Dire side going to look to put a push into Summer's Rift. And Summer's Rift hopes for TI here on the line. Looking very good elsewhere. But HFN, has, they have nothing to deal with him for this anti-mage. And it's a very good pickup as mentioned. The drop jump forward. RP only catches up the Crystal Maiden. And Skewer completely going to whiff. They're not going to expend the roar as well. Because the epicenter was there from Demon. He's going to guess wrong on the Burrow Cat. Able to TP out. And the TP being committed as well by this Beastmaster is going to be cancelled by that Vacuum. Farewell Bright, certain to fall here. Soul Burn from the Orchid will finish him off. BSJ was doing some split pushing, able to TP out though. HFN comes back to mitigate his ability to do that. With the Boots of Travel though, smart TP from BSJ. Knowing TP is expended now by the Dire Side. Will bring down that last outer tier tower for the Dire Side. And... Things now looking good for BSJ and squad. Aegis, soon to expire, I believe. Actually, is still up for about a minute and 40 minutes for HFN, but Radiant not concerned with that. Jump forward. They're going to get the Vacuum and the Sonic Wave onto two. They bring down the Rubik and, well, the Beastmaster already dead. But they bring the Lina low and force her to back. They'll get the Tier 3 and look to back out. That's the first BKB charge expended by Dragon Fist. So he does opt for that BKB. It's a little bit of an odd choice for my taste. Um, but does stop him once again from getting Telekinesed and LS aid. So certainly a Queen of Pain, not a hero that deals well with being disabled. She's pretty squishy innately. And so just wants that security factor as she jumps in. Of course, Roar and RP still there to deal with the BKB. So that's why I feel like it's a bit of an odd choice. As opposed to the Ags just to tank her up and supplement the burst damage from the Queen of Pain. The Ags going to be built anyways. But will be a bit late considering that BKB second item. 
point booster and 2400 gold so actually only 510 gold away from the full eggs if dragon fist doesn't save for buyback here that'll be a very nice item against the anti-mage who does have that spell shield now beginning to be leveled up as he's pretty much maxed in stats and the pure damage of course from the queen of pain not going to be worried too much about that magic resistance so things still looking scary on the anti-mage front for the radiant side but age is now going to expire and i'm sure they're well aware of that so with this tier three eliminated already bottom we will see the dire side pushing things out glimmer cape from cat is going to be able to find out demon and he is dead to say the least H hfn excuse me even going to drop the dunk there to bring down g easy and as you mentioned it's kind of a core level 16 sand king at this point is fourth overall in the game for demon so it's a lot more of a kill than a general support sand king would be he's two items on the way to his hex as well jump skewer forward rp is gonna whiff completely nice blink reactions from both dragon fist and brax and now frostbitten orchid it up and the screaming pains there ion shell to finish off that magnus and the abyss has had a very poor game on this magnus unfortunately for his squad going in for that rp mid onto two juicy looking heroes both of them reacting very hastily to dodge that and now magnus down for 40 seconds no buyback no rp bsj and squad looking to go up high ground and hfn gonna force out the doppelganger early onto bsj vacuum's not gonna catch anyone on the low side they are gonna roar up bsj laguna blade will be there as well he's gonna drop very low he's able to manta and run out though and hfn gonna have to back off as well as cat lsa gonna look to stop the freezing field and it looks like defense was successful from the dire side Full Scotty picked up second level of defusal as well by BSJ. Looking in fighting shape, didn't opt to complete up that H Dom yet. Probably will look to do so some point here today. And elsewhere, we saw the blink a while ago and the Guardian Inch Greaves for Barax. Uh, that hex being built into by Demon is a little bit of a ways away after him dying there, but still only a thousand gold here. And that's going to be a massive item up against the lack of BKBs on the side of the Dire. No one has a BKB, as you would expect from this lineup, unless it was a Lena core, or maybe the Magnus had enough farm to buy one. Um, but Anti-Mage generally doesn't build BKB if he doesn't have to. Uh, and he's already got a full hard up, does HFN. 2600 HP with the Talisman, effective HP looking even more. And he's looking very good, but with that Hex, I mean, that's a little, getting a little bit scary. Of course, Hex no longer applies Break, so he's still going to have those Magic Resistance and the Talisman Evasion there. So still is very tanky, but Hex going to be a nice pickup when it does come out for Demon. Full Ags completed now by Dragon Fist. He is running through the enemy jungle. Will get scouted by this boar, though. So not going to find an obvious pickoff. Or not going to find a surprising jump, at least. Over on the dire side, HFN. Over by the secret shops, gonna get scouted out by Demon. And <laughs> just uh, hey, what's up? Hello, coming out from Demon. <laughs> Not looking to aggress on that anti mage. Maybe gets a click though. Full butterfly up onto HFN, and now looking real scary. Twenty seven hundred health in strength treads for HFN. Not even really necessary to be in strength treads. He's hitting. For well in excess of 300, 390 a pop right now with the butterfly and the empower up. So this is looking really scary. But PSJ, certainly no slouch either. And the hex does come out now for demon. So they will go look to go high ground with that item, BSJ. Are you gonna walk up and chip away at these Raxes? Dragon Slave trying to bring down the illusions shockwave, not gonna miss or not gonna hit. And it almost looks like a free melee Rax. HFN actually DCs, and that's a really poor timing for him to DC for BDAB. Unfortunately, they're going to lose half their melee Rax's HP because of it. Or at least, you know, 10 to 20% because of it. Um, maybe the reaction wasn't soon to come out from HFN right away regardless. But, yeah, this is... Uh This is looking good for the Radiant side. 
if they can get this hex off on HFN. The one thing to be worried about for sure is that we haven't seen a one single good RP all game long. The only RP that even landed on a hero was the one that landed on Demon here, uh, who was not killed off thereafter. So if a if an RP lands into an LSA and HFN with a few right clicks with the Battle Fury, look out for the Radiant side. They need to be certainly worried about it. Not much else to be worried about. Glimmer Capes available on both supports for the Dire side, so that'll be nice for HFN, but pure damage is there, physical damage is there as well. Detection for the Radiant side is unavailable. The Glimmer Cape actually could be massive in this next engagement. Detection completely unavailable to the Radiant side. Glimmer Cape on Whitebeard as well. But yeah, this item is stupid good. Uh, Glimmer Cape, that is. They had HFN reconnect, but it seems like Farewell Bright has disconnected in that same time period. Uh huh. So maybe a reconnect coming out from the Beastmaster as well. <laughs> and. It seems like every time one hero or one player reconnects another is DC'd. <laughs> Jimmy with the fabled term that's not to be mentioned. DDoS, DDoS or Reno. 2400 gold on BSJ as well. Does have that buyback available to him if need be. Does have the boots of travel. So certainly why you see him here on the front lines. Wave coming in as well, HFN. Drawing some sort of cryptic letter on the map. And <laughs> maybe indicating to his team that he's going to look to split push here. Um, and they'll forfeit the racks. Rubik reconnected. Looks like everyone reconnected. No one DC'd here. And HFN with the G. Going to get this one back underway. Perhaps the biggest team fight of the game impending here, folks. BSJ up on the high ground. He's going to doppelganger right away. Look to bring down his melee rocks. He'll force out the glyph. HFN's TP'd back to the fountain. And there's not going to be anyone here to aggress onto. Just some Manta Illusions up to the high ground. Brax going to jump forward with the Vacuum Burrow Strikes only onto one. Sonic Wave as well. They'll blow up the Beastmaster though. And they are going to get a finally an RP onto two. But Glimmer Cape keeps Brax alive. And the Freezing Field now has been dropped. The BKB keeping the Queen of Pain up. The Hex onto HFN. And they will get the Blink out for... Or they Burrow out for Demon. But he'll die on the side as well. They do get that Melee Rax. BS oh, they do not get the Melee Rax. Excuse me. And BSJ backing out. And they lose two there. Two for one trade. Going the Dyer's way. Very big swing of experience for bringing down Brax and, Sand and uh, Demon. And we mentioned it before. This Sand King is not much of a support. Sitting at 1,200 net worth and 17 levels. And that Hex just wasn't enough to put them over the hump against HFN. And this Anti-Mage is looking really scary for Summer's Rift. Thirty-four minutes in, Roshan gonna be spotted out here once again. This is the second Rosh of the game, and HFN even without life steal, easily able to solo it this time. They are gonna ping it out is the radiant side, but the reaction is far too late. The reaction is far too late as the courier will come through, and Crystal Nova gonna scout it out, but. Age is still on the ground here. Frostbite is there. Will he be able to pick it up? Wow, Snatch is there. And the Glimmer Cape by the Crystal Maiden. And a huge misplay from the Dire side. Bottle and TP in the inventory of this Magnus. And the Abyssus Near has just had a poor showing in this game. And Whitebeard... May have just saved the game for his team. He picks up an Aegis. Not only does he do that, he doesn't even feed it with that Glimmer Cape coming out. And that is massive. Massive. I mean, it wouldn't have been on the Anti-Mage regardless. So, it's not the big thing, biggest thing for them to deny that Aegis. But, wow. 
that is a misplay to say the least we haven't seen some good rps maybe the magnus is able to get a little bit more aggressive with that aegis and force some big spells on him out and come back with an rp in this one but that will not be the case and now bsc can jump right up high ground hfn does have the full six slot can go for those boots of travel and upgraded boots of travel at some point maybe the moon shard as well but bkb 10 second duration for him he's standing on the front lines completely fearless and jump forward rp will catch the queen of pain before he's able to bkb the mana is there with the manta is there with the mana void and that's one down quickly mana void comes out to stop bsj's tp and the laguna blade is going to be there to bring down the pl summer's rift in a very precarious position hex is going to be used there as well they have nothing to deal with hfn under the bkb nothing I apologize for that early. I thought Mana Void was used there on the Queen of Pain. Apparently not necessary. Saves it to cancel the TP on BSJ and an optimistic TP to say the least for BSJ. It, it almost seemed like there was a Mana Void animation. Maybe he thought the same thing I did and therefore thought he could TP out. But he's down. Does have buyback, guys. BSJ actually the only one in the game with buyback right now. As HFN j did just purchase that BKB, but with units coming in and the back door jumping down, jump forward, Skewer is going to find Brax through the wall. They are going to get some damage, but Brax totally out of position. They're going to have to expend the roar as he does surge, but Brax is down and no buyback available for the Darks here. The epicenter does come out with the freezing field and the veil on top of HFN with the hex, but he's just too tanky. He's got the BKB available in four seconds as well. He's going to be brought down though with the sonic wave and the scream. And does not have buyback. Orchid is there onto farewell. Bright Burl Strike. Soul Burn should finish off the Beastmaster. Does do so. They even get the Courier. 3,300 worth on that. Berserk going to be brought down on the back lines. And Courier, full boots of travel for HFN. Brought down. Wow. Bringing down that Darkseer, they really thought they had absolutely everything needed to take down that Rax. But the Sonic Wave, as we mentioned, not caring much about your item build for the anti-mage except for the raw hp from the heart the pure damage doing work rp gonna be dropped onto bsj mid lane he's gonna force him back lsa will not land bit of miscommunication there bsj gonna be alive still lsa lands there there's no laguna blade but they will be able to hex up and bring down that lena and now bsj <laughs> desperate for structural damage here is gonna force the buyback out from the lena anti-mage still down for 42 seconds HFN after feeling completely immortal for so long buys up the BKB doesn't have his buyback ready goes up high ground and gets finished off Doppelganger gonna dodge one Shockwave and Dragon Slave and now two lanes of racks or at least one and a half Going the way of the Radiant Burl Strike comes through the Laguna Blade will bring down the Aegis On the Crystal Maiden and Whitebeard probably to fall here once again Demon actually gonna walk through is gonna use the Sandstorm and try and disjoint himself and he is trying to disjoint the enemy. And he is able to do so and blink out. Meanwhile, BSJ doing work top lane. Two racks advantage. Now going the Radiance way with HFN respawning, though. They need to get out and do it quickly. And the Radiant will be able to do so. 3,700 gold on Demon. Massive team fight win and objectives taken. With the Boots of Travel available to BSJ. Knowing that BKB was just purchased, very good game sense from him to jump right towards that mid lane all by his lonesome. Magnus and Lena, not with enough firepower to bring him down. And now he's got his full butterfly on BSJ. 2k gold as well. Picks up a DD, gonna push in this bottom lane. HFN actually had his BKB popped. 9 second BKB for HFN on the sidelines now. Is level 25. Can only purchase up that Moon Shard now with the Boots of Travel purchased. Doesn't have buyback yet, just yet though. So, this ancient mage is effectively capped at this point. And now we are going to see the Lincoln's pickup coming out from Dragon Fist. So, very defensive build from Dragon Fist. Um, but it is one that's going to keep him alive pretty much throughout this engagement as long as he doesn't get in the face of HFN. Twenty-five to fifteen, forty minutes in. HFN looking very scary, feeding himself over bot lane, hanging around a little bit too long with low HP and was smacking on the melee racks as well. So no 
Real, uh, real objective secured for him. He will run into the Queen of Pain here. Is going to get orchided up. Does have the Manta. Not even going to opt to pop it here. We'll pop it there after. Going to blink forward. Still looking for the Queen of Pain. And Brack's going to come in with the vacuum there. They do have the Frostbite for HFN. He's got the BKB. He's actually going to pop the Mana Void through that uh, Lincoln's. And the Roar is going to be there from the high ground onto Brax LSA. And the BKB popped a little bit late there. He's going to stop the epicenter. The RP's on to three from the Abyss. That's his first big RP of the game. And they'll bring down everyone. Ultra kill going HFN's way. And they have nothing. I'll say it again. Nothing to deal with him through BKB. He BKBs with 700 HP there. And they can't bring him down. And a massive counter initiation coming out from the Abyss is near. That's the first RP of the game, it seems, that has even mattered for the Dire side. And it's a huge one. Three buybacks available for the Radiant. Buybacks on the Sand King, Darkseer, and the PL. No buyback available to the Queen of Pain after just picking up that Lincoln Sphere. Lincoln Sphere, of course, did block the Mana Void there, which was nice, but now you're dead. And the push is impending for sure. Two lanes being brought in by the Dire side, and Summer's Rift. TI hopes on the line. Very scary for them. HFN. Well drafted by the Dire side. Beautiful pick for this anti-mage. They really had nothing to deal with him. He's going to jump up high ground. Fight backdoor protection here. Uh, no units coming in just yet. He's going to be hard pressed to bring this down. Still feeling a little bit immortal. Is this anti-mage. And with three on the sidelines, why wouldn't he? He's going to drop down the treads. Bring in the boots of travel. Jumps forward. Not going to find anyone just yet. We'll find the radiant tracks. Excuse me. Very quickly. Glimmer cape there. Onto Whitebeard. Keeps him safe from the stolen Burrow Strike from Berserk. Jump forward. They're going to find the Hex onto HFN. From the top side, they get the kill on the Rubik using the Sonic Wave. And everyone just going to back out. Little bit traumatized, perhaps, from what happened last time HFN died. But the buyback's available for this anti-mage here, and they're looking for someone to show their face outside of base. They know this isn't the real PL, though. And smart play from the Dire side. But... Nobody going to bite the bait from the Radiant. And they only lose a Rubik for that. Maybe they wait out the next Roshan. It's going to be a pretty short spawn here. Uh, actually, it's a little bit over the average. So, not the greatest spawn for the Dire side. Uh, but everyone well within their... Or has the wherewithal to defend this Roshan or contest this Roshan at this point. Looks like Abyssal going to be the next item for HFN. Not sure what he's going to replace here. Let's pick up that Basher. Rather than picking up the Moon Shard. It's an odd decision if you ask me. I feel like he needs all his items, but... He's going to sell one there and grab up the Abyssal. Very nice item for him to have. Sonic Wave going to come out mid lane. Doesn't hit on HFN, just going to clear up the wave. And HFN going to quickly do the same. It is an Ag's ultimate though. Orchid going to be popped mid lane. Maybe just to force out the Manta. Won't be able to do so. HFN. Looking scary as ever. On this anti-mage. And the Hex from Demon. Almost seemed to be the saving grace at a point. But hasn't really panned out to be that. BSJ. Still sitting on that Morbid Mask. 4100 gold in his pockets. 2600 surplus. With Demon he'll do some split pushing top lane. No one here to contest this just yet. Hawk, though, does scout them out. Smoke movement. Not committed from either side. There is a Dire Observer word here, though. They're going to scout out BSJ. And the Hawk's going to scout out, too. So they know more or less the full lineup is here from the Radiant side. HFN continuing to split push bot lane with those boots of travel. Illusion's doing some work. On this tier 3, and the Manta's bringing it very low. They're even going to have to telekinese them. Shockwave and the Dragon Slave to bring him down. HFN, going to TP back to base. And maybe to look to find someone on the retreat. They do have these Abyssal now. Blink Abyssal. Pretty much any hero who doesn't have very quick counter initiation is going to die to this Blink Abyssal. And with the BKB on HFN, counter initiation is not going to be so effective. Seven seconds still? Seven seconds. On HFN's BKB. 
This is the longest game I have been able to cast in 684 in a while. Games generally don't go this deep. And PL versus Anti Mage, very classic war of hard carries. It looks like the Radiant are in a very good position on paper. But this game is just inches away from them losing it. And I'll knock on wood for you Summers Rift fans. I'm one myself. But I have to say HFN and crew have looked sharp in this game. The Abyss is near. Had a very, very rough first 30 minutes. But at about 30 minutes, hits a massive RP over here to bring down three. Ultra kill going HFN's way. That brings him to essentially six slotted. And... Thereafter, he picked up an Abyssal. So, this probably has been seen by the Radiant, but yet to be revealed in a fight. Gem is on the Dire side as well, so, see from the Radiant. Very little vision coming out for them. Dire side, not much either, at least across the river, but they do have some defensive vision up, and they know they're not being scouted themselves. And of course, they have the Hawk, so... Reconnect back into the game. We're going to have the go here. Any other items to speak of? The BKB is up on the Magnus, so 10 second BKB there. And with that, he could probably secure a pretty influential RP in the next engagement. I'll take your tribute. Certainly a possibility here. Battle Fury was what was sold by HFN. Took me a while to figure that out. But HFN selling his Battle Fury. Still 4k gold on him. Odd odd to sell your Battle Fury versus an anti uh, versus a PL, excuse me. <laughs> Speaking of PL, BSJ, front lines. Taking down Roshan as HFN split pushes the top lane. Dire side are aware of this, but they are gonna be intercepted by Whitebeard. Whitebeard may pay with his life here, but has the glimmer cape and the blink. And that'll secure Roshan here. Very nice strategic play coming out from the Radiant side. HFN trying to get something off of it. Will look to bring down that tier 3. Gets Arcaded and Hexed. Burrow Strike's available as well. They're going to chain their CCs very nicely onto this anti mage. He will be able to Manta up, but he's going to be brought down. Does have... Does give over a Dominating Streak to the Crystal Maiden of all heroes. Does have buyback available. So not purchasing that Moon Shard. Certainly a wise decision here, but... HFN sticking around a little too long once again. And the Immortality Syndrome has really not benefited him, benefited him a couple of times here. Double damage rune onto BSJ as well. And he's going to walk up mid lane and push this in all by his lonesome as the rest of his team pushes up top. BSJ. Going to farm up the jungle as his team brings the lane up to him does have the Aegis of course. 3100 gold as well can even have a third life in this engagement with the buyback bots. That's buyback comes out from HFN. No fear. We'll see if BSJ and crew are even look to, looking to go in here. Seems like they're content with the spoils of forcing the buyback on the enemy mage. That's going to be down for 5 minutes and they do have Aegis as well. So maybe they look to reset and go high ground or find BSJ's next item and go high ground. Although he does have the Aegis so can't really replace that right now anything soon to come maybe a refresher for the crystal maiden i don't know if that's the item i mean, I, I would assume it's a lincoln's uh, to drop on one of his cores could be that refresher though 5k gold onto demon what are you gonna buy demon e-blade could be an e-blade for this sand king protect one of his cores who gets roared up um there is a Laguna Blade, of course, so E-Blade, not the best, but the Ags is out for Cat, so E-Blade actually going to disregard that, as it's going to do its damage no matter what, so. Hmm. Interesting call, to say the least, for a Demon, what his next item will be. He's already got the Boots of Travel as well, so... Very rich Sand King. Fourth overall net worth. Anything else to come out of importance? Four Staff comes out for Farewell Bright. That wasn't up a little while ago. So Max Mobility. Good range of initiation for this Beastmaster. Three Blink Taggers here. 
on the dire side and three as well on the radiant has the dark seer picked up anything brax has not had the richest of games on his dark seer guardians greaves blink picked up very early bsj gonna bring down that tier three and chipping away at the range racks does have the glimmer cape available as well as the aegis and he's gonna take that one uncontested <laughs> it does go down there a little bit awkwardly uh, he's gonna get the defusal off onto hfn doppelganger back phantom rush in those illusions completely blowing up cat's mana pool glimmer cape though keeping cat safe for now lsa gonna whiff no yules to set that up spirit lance gonna come out and bsj just gonna stand on the front lines mid lane they're gonna get the hex off onto hfn the skewer back demon though and they're gonna isolate him but meanwhile the rocks is gonna be taken and they don't even commit to me to demon so demon's able to make it out to the east the Rax is taken, and that's the most uneventful gaining of Mega Creeps for a squad I've seen in a very long time. <laughs> Full AC going to count as well. This is going to help with the push from the Illusions. So, really, they have to commit very little now from the Radiant side. Throw Illusions in at those Tier 4s. Wait till the Dire side converge on them, and then initiate with a big Burrow Epi, perhaps, from g easy or demon he's picked up a refresher i believe unless he sold it echo shell echo shell coming out for whitebeard um yeah it looks like the refresher no nope, it's in the stash so he buys it again demon uh second guessing himself on that refresher pickup but he ends up picking it up as the bkb duration starts to dwindle for hfn will become a little bit more and more effective spirit land's going to be disjointed mid lane and bsj is just going to continue to keep the lane put waves pushed in from all sides mega creeps on the radiance are going to ensure that of course they have one of the best heroes in the game at dealing with mega creeps except he sold his battle fury so anti-mage doesn't deal with illusions or creeps extremely well right now picking up that abyssal over the battle fury uh, rather than selling the manta or picking up a moon shard on top of the battle fury HFN going to get hexed up, but he's going to get forced back. He'll be just fine. Demon not able to catch that Burl Strike. Brax is a little bit out of position. He's going to get abyssaled up and blown up. Epicenter going to be channeled from Demon. He's going to jump in. He's not going to do much of anything, though. HFN with that spell shield innately tanky versus that RP only catches out the Queen of Pain. HFN going to be able to drop one. That's an instant buyback coming out as well, though. BKB... Trying to keep the Queen of Pain safe. The Diffusal Blade and the Burl Strike will be there on the HFN. Will he go down? He does. No buyback on HFN. And GG. Well played. BSJ and crew. Triple kill going the Phantom Lancer's way. Finally able to overwhelm BDAB. But what a showing from the Dire side. And I actually was really worried. Yeah, so unfortunately we're joining by AP here. Um, IP here, guys. So. We are gonna see that. Uh, that end. We are not gonna be able to see that end screen. But either way, really nice showing from BDAB. Unfortunately, they're gonna fall here. Summer's Rift gonna take two games now, or two series now in a row, and the next to come very soon as well. Uh, so that was the round of 32. We're now down to 16, and after that, quarterfinals. So we'll continue to chronicle. Uh, the journey of BSJ and Summer's Rift for you guys. Thanks so much for joining me here on Afla TV2. I am Maurice Please, your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster. This is the Face It Open qualifiers for the International 5, your NA region. And we'll be back very soon, BSJ and crew, with another win under their belt, continuing to move on in Face.